Okay, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Um, I am Yori Polani. Happy holidays still. Uh, tomorrow, everything will be back uh, where it used to be. The streets will be jam-packed with uh, cars, people getting to their workplaces and to their shops and to their businesses, uh, just the way it used to be. So, um, well, as we are today, where the word is that uh, President-elect Bola Tinumbu and his wife are expected back in the country today uh, from Paris. And so, you know, I guess there are a lot of people who are going to be excited about that. Uh, he's been away for a while and there have been a lot of people asking after him, which is not to say that there was any shortage of information and uh, he's uh, um, being active in terms of communicating, but still... Our people wanted to know. We've not seen him in a while. And uh, he was so much visible when he was here that I suppose it's understandable. Anyway, the word is President-elect Bola Tinumbu and his wife, Senator Oluremi uh, Tinumbu, are expected back from Paris today. Okay, now, um, but talking about the election, uh, which he won, and um, yeah, it is what it is. There are still those who are disputing it. In fact, I was... Uh, I, I was reading in one paper that um, Senator Namani had uh, uh, prevailed upon uh, Mr. Pito B to withdraw uh, his uh, petition against Tinubu, but that was just personal advice between them. Uh, Lord knows how that will be received. But if we're to go across to uh, Plateau State today, I think um, we'd, we'd be touching on a place that we don't always touch, apart from... Uh, uh, Madam Ada, who calls in quite frequently uh, from Joss. That way we get to hear something of Joss. But today we'll be hearing from the APC spokesperson in Plateau State, Mr. Silvanus Namang. Mr. Namang joins us via Zoom. Good morning to you, Mr. Namang. Uh, good morning, Uncle Farari. <laughs> Thank you very much for making time for us, sir. Okay. Now, um, I just thought that um, it, it, it could be interesting to, because we've been doing it for quite a while, uh, to take uh, a look at like the post-mortem, a post-mortem of uh, the 2023 uh, elections focusing on Plateau State. Now, in Plateau State, uh, the PDP uh, won uh, that particular contest. I believe uh, Mr. Caleb... Uh, Math Twang, uh, he was the winner. Um, tell me the sort of um, the, the, the attitude of politics in there. Um, is everything on the hunky dory? Because at the time that INEC announced the winner, the APC uh, candidate in that race uh, to be the winner, there were also reports that there were 14 beavers and 14 ad hoc staff missing in the election all of which gave some cause for concern. Tell me the situation now uh, politically uh, and with a view to, you know, looking at the just concluded election. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, you see the issue of election, particularly in Nigeria, not only in Plateau State, is that uh, given our situation, elections do not start and end at the, the announcement of results. The electoral process has met the tribunal to become part of it. So uh, in Plateau State, there is still a contention over the gubernatorial uh, election. Because our candidate, Dr. Nenta Oyilwada, uh, in the end, is going to emerge as the winner because of the so many uh, issues that uh, came up uh, during the election. As time goes on, I'm going to expatiate on, uh, on those ones. Mm. But uh, clearly, the APC, it is not right really to say that the, AC, the APC lost the elections in Plato. The APC, we can beat our chest that in spite of all that took place, the APC has produced uh, the president-elect under the tutelage of the director general, who is the Plateau State Governor, Right Honorable Simon Bakola And we are very proud that a president has been elected 
under his uh, director generalship. And apart from that, uh, the uh, APC, in spite of all the gang ops, the gang up particularly by religious bodies, the election in Plateau State was between the religious, uh, some religious bodies who uh, uh, whip up sentiments against the APC. The APC was so stereotyped uh, during the election, uh, particularly the uh, presidential election, where Okay, as I said, uh, Mr. Namang is uh, joining us via Zoom and uh, dropouts like that happen. It might have even returned as we are speaking, uh, but please- Against uh, that of the, against the PDP 243,000 and the Labour Party, which uh, religion was deeply involved and uh, applied for the election. In fact, at the time, uh, the churches were preaching that the election is between uh, darkness and light, and that darkness is the APC, surprisingly. And uh, it, you know, as it is said, that uh, religion is opium of the masses. And that really affected uh, our results in Plateau State here. It was worse with the uh, gubernatorial election, where the churches became a, a political party campaigning vigorously against the APC. Uh, so we and, uh, they went into so many things that were not right uh, in our electoral process. That's the use of beavers. Beavers were not used in uh, several places. And uh, apart from that, uh, there were other issues, uh, such as using clearly uh, individuals who contested primary elections in the PDP as returning officers. We shall come to that. For a fact, I mean, that, that has been determined to be a fact because that would be wrong if it were true. But, but, but that is really true. A particular instance is in uh, Mangu local government, mm -hmm. uh, which happens to be my own local government where the returning officer clearly contested primary election in the PDP. And uh, he became, uh, there was a collaboration of a sort between the PDP and the INEC in Plateau State here. Yeah. If not, INEC should have known that it was wrong to involve an individual who contested election under a party against the electoral, electoral law and uh, the constitution of uh, our country. Uh, that is why mostly university lecturers are used as returning officers. But in this case, this individual uh, became a returning officer and mass brought massive votes for uh, the PDP in Mango local government, which happens to be the local government of the PDP gubernatorial candidate. Well, what, what do you think this portends? Uh, because um, there have been... Uh, entreaties, sermons, you know, uh, advice that, look, um, let us try to eschew a politics of division. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're all either from, you know, a given uh, section of the country or we're, we're all Nigerians. It doesn't matter what your faith is. But apparently not all uh, are taking to this. Do you see any dangers uh, in this if people have to segment all these things and begin to vote along those lines, uh, whether or not competency is in question. That is just your personal. Honestly, view. It is the, the the issue is uh, uh, what took place has really caused uh, deep division uh, within the plateau setting. You see, when religious leaders uh, become uh, politicians and preaching freely on the pulpit. You know you cannot question anybody on the pulpit. Um, whatever they say uh, uh, goes down. And uh, in Plateau State here, yeah, it's so regrettable that we had that kind of uh, situation. And uh, the healer of the wound will definitely take some time. 
And uh, this has happened uh, in both uh, religions. Uh, in some cases here in Plato State too, uh, there were allegations of uh, some uh, Islamic preachers preaching against the other candidate. But that of the church was so deep and so inclusive that it affected greatly the electoral uh, process. Because, uh, and it created room for, because Plato, created room for impunity. Because, because Plato is predominantly Christian. Is that correct? Yes. They, they, they really clearly said he was a candidate being sponsored by the Sultanate and that he was going to build a mosque inside the Josman market and so on. So many other issues. And now uh, you see all these things took place. But you see, it will be difficult to heal this kind of wound because we, remain, we are all Christians. The candidates who contested the three major candidates were Christians and of the same denomination, Kokin. And it was Kokin preaching against Kokin members. Our candidate, Dr. Neta Yilwada, is the son of a retired, a, a late pastor who, who trained most of the pastors that preached against him. And now the issue is they are regretting because they lack what we will tell people now. And you know the injury has been caused. And as politicians, we are, it is not yet over until it is over. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as I told you, the tribunals are here. They have become part of our electoral process. So uh, if I understood that well, um, even though Mr. Caleb uh, Matwang of the PDP has been declared the winner by INEC, uh, that is being contested. Did I get that part right? Or uh, you are accepting? you know, the declaration? Uh, you, you see, as I said, uh, we cannot accept uh, that because uh, we have taken our case to the tribunal. The okay. tribunal is going to uh, resolve all that. Okay. And uh, as you know, the, there, has, there has always been this pressure on our candidate to congratulate uh, Barista Khaled Mufa. I think that is too early uh, because uh, the tribunals are there and uh, it will make a mockery of the whole exercise for our candidate who has gone to the tribunal, who has petitioned to begin to congratulate. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations will come in when finally the tribunals have uh, decided. When they decide, uh, either way, if it is in favor of uh, the APC, we hope that uh, the PDP candidate is going to congratulate our candidate. <laughs> if uh, it is confirmed that he is the winner by the tribunal, our candidate is a very humble human being. He is going to uh, surely congratulate the winner. Okay. After all, in spite of what has been said, all of them, the three major candidates, remain good friends. They see each other as brothers. Indeed. Uh, but as you said, um wounds, cleavages were created um, that we have to heal one way or the other uh, following this election. Because it wasn't, this, this division wasn't there before the elections. It's, it's elections, it has been alleged, that bring up these cleavages up and down the line. We had something like that in Lagos as well. <laughs> you see, these issues have always been there. You see, people who, who don't have uh, anything to contribute uh, to the development of society or the electorate. Uh, they always fall back to religion. And as I said, religion is seen as uh, opium of the masses. It is the easiest way of deceiving people. And once they are deceived, you come back to tell them that what you did was wrong. And uh, by, by, by the time you do that, a lot of uh, damages uh, have been caused. And that is the situation here in Plato State. And uh, you see, uh, we as a party, we, 
we have kept our calm over these issues uh, because we know that uh, these issues, the people who preach uh, these issues do not really mean it. It's not from their heart, it is from their head. So now they are regretting and we hope that uh, with time, as our elect uh, electoral process uh, develops or matures, we believe that we will soon get it right. We are married. We in APC who are contesting this election, believing that our candidate was the most qualified because of his uh, uh, past uh, antecedents. But we didn't know that a bigger enemy existed somewhere oh, okay. uh, to ensure that he did much. Okay. Um, uh, uh, let me bring on our first caller today. Good morning to you, Reverend Dominic. Reverend Dominic, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Yoli. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning to your guest in Platinum. Yes. Yoli, I want to ask, start by asking a question. Our president elect, is he coming to Lagos or is he coming to Abuja? You know, as we say in, in our local palace, he's not going to give. Is he going to Aguda House in Abuja, where he's supposed to stay as a president elect before he takes a rock? Are we coming to see us here in Lagos? Where is he coming? Is he Lagos, Abuja? Well, he's coming home to Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming home to Nigeria. Okay. And you will know immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, by the way, Yore, I've said it before. Let me say it again. To me, this election has come and gone. And it's, we have lost some of win. On the on the if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, this commentary I'm hearing from Plato is good to me, but somehow, if the man is saying that they, they won, what is he trying to, why did he go to tribunal? The matter is in the court. He's supposed to stay clear and let the court make, you know, a very strong decision. But if he says he won, what if the tribunal said, well, it was PDV, what would he do? Well, he you just know? said, he just said that they will accept whatever the tribunal says. Okay, this one I'm saying that did not exist. But number two, most of these tribunals, theory, most of the matters in these tribunals, it's not even about your conduct or my conduct in the day of this election. It's about INEC and their laws and the way they bring their laws. If I had him clear, if somebody has contested the election in a political party, which means he's a cat, cat member of that political party, he's not qualified to become an official. Or even an observer in INEC. Yes. But if what he's saying is okay, it's true. I think uh, something is wrong somewhere there, if they can prove it. And this is the issue we had in this election. I've said before, I don't know how to comment on this election. In one breath, is one of the best we have had since 1999, honestly. Because he gets everybody, whatever you are, whatever you deserve. And another place, people say it's worse. I don't believe it's the worst. Because if it says what, where do you put two hundred seven elections? Where do you put state election that come hundred percent? This election, honestly, to be frank, I'm saying this people will stop me. I know people will stop me. It's one of the best we have had since nineteen ninety nine. But let the tribunal sort this everything out. But this election by myself, by me, I'm supposed to complain about this election as a person who supports you know, but I also I did not put but this is one of the best elections we had since 1999. The first time a third force to get one million votes. Go ahead, go ahead say from 1999 now. The first time a third force to get one million votes in the election since 1999. Took of six million votes from the third force. I think it's one of the best. For Jagaban to lose a election in Lagos, something else somewhere happened. I thought it's the best. But let the Tsuruna said to me, but we are moving forward. Election have won and the loss. And say, congratulations to Nigeria. Let's meet for a better government. We have suffered much, somebody say. People have suffered so much. Let's see if Jagaban will turn things around. Especially this Naira, especially this economy, your increase, especially the security. Every day I had how blood is shed in Kaduna. I begin to believe it's no more true. Every day I hear how blood is shed in Benu. I begin to think it's a, maybe it's a media hype. And most of these things are true. How do a man lose the whole family in day? After a woman loses husband and children in the day, in the present Nigeria, my 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 agenda for Mr. President is even though he will not win anything, please let that be peace 
in Nigeria. This can only start in a good road. It's a man who is alive that can drive in a good road. It's a man who is alive that can drive on the train. It's a man who is alive that can live in a good house. The fourth agenda to Mr. President is what? Security, security. God bless him. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Dominic, uh, as usual. Um, thank you very much uh, for that, uh, uh, for contributing uh, that point of view. Uh, and now, um, Mr. Namang, I, I, I don't know, you, you heard there um, the, the Reverend, you know, taking it from what we're talking about, then, then going off into a tangent as to the amount of work that we're going, that is going, that is uh, that the incoming administration headed up by uh, President, uh, uh, President-elect uh, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, who will be president after the uh, 29th, uh, that he has before him. And um, give me your thoughts on, on, on that, uh, given the, 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 the tussling that is still going on at this late stage. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, you see, our democracy is uh, work in progress. The Nigeria project is a continuous one. I agree with him totally that uh, there's a lot of work and we believe in uh, the capacity and ability of our president elect to turn things around. Uh, you see, there have been so much impunity in our, in our setting. Uh, we have to fundamentally deal with, with this so that we mature as other democracies, especially where we have copied from. Uh, I, I agree with him that there's a lot of work uh, to be done, but that is not to lose hope in our democratic process. As he said, uh, this election uh, that... Okay, he, he just got to where... Uh, he was going to paraphrase Reverend Dominic that... Um, as far as he, Reverend Dominic, is concerned, this is the best election that we've had, uh, quite frankly. Even though he said uh, that um, he can imagine that um, there will be a lot of people who would uh, see it uh, alternatively, but he was speaking for himself. And um, uh, he, he specifically referred to the number of votes that we were getting now, as opposed to the kind of extraneous figures we used to be getting before. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning, Uncle Yari, and uh, greetings to your guest from George. Yes, thank you. Uncle Yari, it is not only a randomly. The majority of Nigerians know that this election that has just taken place remains the best, you know, viewed from different perspectives. Because it has not been ever competitive like this in the past. See that as it may, we will grow from it. What your, what your guest is saying is shocking to me that a known party man is acting as a returning officer. I don't know why they allowed that to happen. I hope it's not going to be like the case in uh, uh, Adamawa again. Once, when you pointed it, the, the moment you spotted it, that's the time you should have, you know, hit and insist that that person should not be a returning officer. Uncle Yuri, uh, did as, as it may. Last week, I called your program when a Labour Party personnel was with you. Okay. And I was asking the person, I expressed my concern about the bullying attitude of Mr. Obi's supporter. And the person himself expressed his concern about it. But later on, one, apparently one of Mr. Obi's supporters from job saw the program and was lambasting it. The reason why I'm bringing it up is for reasons of posterity. TVC is the only station standing in Nigeria as we speak. And that is the only station that people can refer to. When I said what I said, even what, when it, what I said wasn't true, I expected the caller to prove that it was not true. But rather, she was using abusive language on me. That's the same way that the supporters of Mr. B are doing to uh, VIP Nigeria. Professor Wole showing card to the best of my knowledge, had gone to jail for 19 months for supporting the then uh, agitators of, uh, of Jafra. He is not known as a supporter of, uh, of Bola Tinubu. He merely said, look, 
followed the due process and they started abusing him. This man is a Nobel laureate. He was confirmed with that title 39 years ago. Most of the people abusing him on, 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 on social media are not, we are not yet born then. Dati Ahmed, the vice presidential candidate of, of the Labour Party, can pass for his son. He merely advised him, do things in the right way. And then they start abusing, and that is the way they do so for every other person. I am bringing it up here, Uncle Yoru, because you should not allow that kind of bullying pattern to come to TVC. But people are free to call, arise, or channel television where anything, is, anything can go. But okay. this is the only situation that we know we can rely on for integrity. Please don't allow it to happen. This country must be repaired. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. George, and uh, for uh, contributing your you know, opinion. But on TBC here, all you know, parties are, are welcome, even those that some of our viewers might not particularly care for. But they, if they are in the political space, um, then you know, Mr. George, uh, it's not a new thing. We want them. In fact, part of the uh, challenge has been that we invite people from you know, APC has been the ruling party for the past eight years now, almost. And um, we invite people that are not of the ruling party. And for some reason, not all of them want to accept. So those that do accept, we're very, we're, we're very happy to uh, have them on. Maybe they think they won't be treated fairly. Nah, uh, it's, it's not the case. But I hear what you're saying. And there might be other people who don't agree with you. But we always say that those people, too, have a right to their opinion. I'm sure you understand me, uh, Mr. George. What I'll do now is I'll take a break, uh, but stay with us, please. Uh, we'll come back and we'll continue our conversation with Mr. Sylvanus Namang, spokesperson of APC in Plateau State. Do Welcome back and uh, continuing our conversation with Sylvanus Namang. He's the spokesperson of the APC in uh, uh, Plateau State. And um, we've, you know, he's been telling us some not too savory things about uh, the division uh, that seems to have characterized the conclusion of that election. Now, Mr. Namang, you were explaining um, that all sorts of uh, untoward practices happened. Uh, additionally, we, we've spoken about uh, there were 14 bivases were lost, uh, 14 ad hoc staff at the time were, de were declared uh, uh, missing. Uh, even 14 polling stations uh, in just north, I understand, uh, it was said that uh, voting didn't, according to newspaper reports, newspaper reports had it that voting didn't happen in some of those uh, places. Are these all the kind of things that have been put together and that will be submitted to a tribunal for adjudication? Yes. Uh, what we submitted in the tribunal are three major grounds. And that is one of the grounds okay. of uh, the petition. The first ground is that the candidates of the PDP were not duly nominated because the, the, there was no, they did not contest under a political party. As you are aware, since 2020, there has been a problem between the PDP and PDP, which they have been trying to drag the APC into it. Uh, they conducted a Congress to elect uh, executive committee members for the party. And there was a disagreement because of exclusion of one of the camps. The former Governor Jonah Jan Kam, which uh, presently controls the PDP in the state, Denied the camp uh, of uh, Senator Jeremiah Husseini, former Governor Fidel Istanbul, former Minister of Sports D.T. Sango, and uh, Honorable Petrus Kaze, a former member of the House of Reps. Their camp was denied uh, participation, or, and they were not given even an ex official member in the party. And uh, the, 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 the Jeremiah Husseini camp felt aggrieved and they went to court. Uh, Beatrice Kaze took the issue to court. And the court ruled that uh, 
rule against the PDP that they don't have a valid uh, executive committee members. And he advised the SP gang, Justice SP gang, clearly advised them to go back and do the writing. Instead of going back to do the writing, they insisted and dissolved the party and went and uh, formed uh, uh, another committee to. Hmm. Uh, okay, it, it's frozen again. Maybe I should use this time uh, to say good morning to Mr. Yakub from Dokwemu. Uh, good morning to you, and uh, go right ahead now. I hope Mr. Naman can hear you. If not, I'll paraphrase your yeah. question to him, or if it's a commentary. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Shifari, and then uh, good morning. I want to do him again. Uh, but uh, Shifari, let me begin by saying that uh, uh, kudos to... Uh, the governor of Plateau State, uh, uh, because he was the DG that produced a very valid and very good ticket as a president elect, in person of Asha Bala Metinubu, has done very well. Because when he was even appointing that very particular position, he was castigating all around the club that uh, because uh, the ticket of Asha Bala Metinubu is a Muslim Muslim. Ticket and they ought not to take that. But it took the bull by the one that first and foremost, I'm a Nigerian. In fact, become a, a, a Christian or Muslim. So this is position that I'm going to take. And he took it. And then he won the election for Ashwai Bola and Tinubu. Once again, put those to him for president. But I'm going to say that, Chief Jory, uh, uh, Mr. George said something earlier. The APC in Plateau State, now they are complaining about the returning officer. They ought not to allow that to stay before, before now. But as it is, yes, election has been gone, the winner has been announced, but the winner is also there. They took, they took the right step. That is what they are telling the good people that election has come and passed. That's all that standard that you can use not to attack anybody. Go to the court, go and go and fight. If you are if you're so sure that truly you won the election, the winner is there to settle every one of us. But I believe, as the Reverend Dominic said earlier, the best. Ever, the jury I repeat, the best ever election we have ever had since 1999 is this very particular election that we just had. Because there was no any state can boast one million, except even cannot say that Rabbi Musa Kwankato put that much election. It is not reaching one million for one candidate there. So it is it's best election so ever. Then, if you are another thing is this your station, TCC station, remain the best station ever. Why am I saying that? I expect to be corrected in this country today as it is. I want somebody to tell me one station that gives me opportunity to Nigerian citizens to speak their mind. None. Even the one that uh, Mr. George mentioned earlier, I and the channel service. In fact, before channel service allowed that. But when they, when they know, when they brought guests, we just begin to lie. We that we call in, we begin to antagonize the say that you are lying. What you are saying is not right. They, they shut it down. They don't allow it anymore. It is only it is only TV station that allows us to be our men to see what Nigerian citizens. In fact, a lot of people want to call in. Sometimes when we be our men, we are saying their mind as well. Some somebody wants to be, as I'm saying now, some people are here. They want to say the same thing, but they are not opportune to call in. So, Mr. Ayori, keep going. We are support this station, and then it will be the best station ever. Thank you, and God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yakub, for calling in. And in fact, you brought up something that Mr. George had started, and I was going to uh, bring it to uh, Mr. Namang as well. Uh, and Mr. Namang, I hope that the audio is back now. Can you hear me now? Aha, there you go. Um, yes, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, a caller before this had said that um, when you noticed that anomaly, that a person who you knew to be a member of a political party uh, was uh, acting as an INEC official, uh, and which shouldn't have been. Why did you allow him to proceed up to the extent that it is now an issue that you are taking before uh, a tribunal? I mean, why wasn't an outcry? What let, let me, what happened? What happened was uh, the list of returning officers were not published for, for us to scrutinize to know uh, whether the person is a party member or not. 
we took it that uh, the normal process is involvement of uh, university lecturers for such exercise. But in this case, there were two stretch cases. Uh, apart from that, uh, why you said uh, 14 beavers were missing and uh, so on in uh, just not. This, uh, the issue of just not is Narakuta B, which happens to be a strong call of uh, the APC. And it's one of the largest wards in the whole country with over 300, uh, close to 300 uh, voters. And uh, what happened in the case of, uh, in, in that case, was that there was a special Oh, I really would like to hear that explanation. I hope the uh, audio, the sound comes back pretty soon because you were just going to say what happened. Um, so if we do get you back, um, you probably are not aware that we can't hear what you're saying anymore. So I'm going to take, you know... We uh, complain. Uh, uh, could you, uh, now that you're back, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, now that you're back, could you go back to where you said what happened was, and then at that time we lost sound. Could you go back to that place, please? Okay, what took place in uh, just just not is the strange involvement of the electoral uh, officer for just not who suddenly took over the function of the coalition officer. The Naraguta B ward is one of the biggest wards in this country, with over with close to three hundred voters. Uh, so there was a special interest, and uh, this thing happened. Uh, there was a collaboration, uh, strangely so. Between INE, because the INE was deeply involved, the electoral officer who was supposed to be the umpire took over the collection of results. And we complained. We complained, and nothing was done about it. And that is one of the grounds of our petition at the tribunal. And for the issue of uh, Mongol local government, uh, we never imagined, going by the electoral uh, law, that somebody from somewhere who participated actively in the primary election of a party to represent it at the House of Assembly, suddenly uh, became the returning officer for the local government. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the grounds of our petition. The only way we can get a solution to this is through the electoral process. And you are aware of the case of Akwa Ibo. What happened to... Uh, during Senator Fabio's uh, election, where a similar thing happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of it, it's not just the tribunal, but that, that person has to be treated according to the law of the land. Indeed, indeed. Um, Elder David in Ailimosho has called in. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you, Yori. God will bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. And you too. I appreciate your effort. Uh, the election has come and gone. We thank God. The most popular candidate has a man. There's no doubt about it. This is the freest election we have ever had since 1999. I always said in this station here that people will win this election, if you could remember. That's right. I don't doubt it. But the only thing I want to appeal to Nigeria is that we should just accept the result of what has happened because the best election we have ever had, and I like it, I was in CDP, I joined in 1990, yes, or yes, and we know what happened there. What is there is that, let us thank God that the best, the best result has come out. People have the best results all over the whole country. We are not talking of other tribal uh, politicians who get votes in their own area and in other places. And some of these PC members that are failing some other PC, we know the reason why it happened. They shouldn't bother. They should just forget about that because elephant meat is more bigger than that of antelope. Yeah, APC is elephant. And now that our president is going out, may God bless him, the best we can ever see since 1999. And he's handing over to the man who will lay a better foundation. Nigeria we enjoy, you will enjoy, we enjoy. May God bless Nigeria. May God bless every one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Thank you very much for calling in, Elder David. Um, uh, Mr. Namang, let me bring to you a comment I've also heard. The way conversation, public conversation is going on, of course, as you know, following the election, there's still the, uh, the two 
closest uh, people to him, that is the second and the distant third, Mr. Peter Obi, are all protesting. In fact, Mr. Obi has actually said uh, from his distant third position that he's going to prove uh, how he won the election. Uh, all, of, all of that, be all of that as it uh, may uh, at the moment. But what do you say to those who say, the election has come and gone. Uh, we've done the campaign, but uh, a lot of people are still talking as if we were in campaign mode. Nobody can vote anymore. Now the, the only thing that can happen is that rulings can come down from you know, the, uh, the, the bodies. What would you say from uh, the tribunals? What would you say to people who speak like that? So some, they say, there is a need to continue uh, in the face of, you know, unrelenting uh, stories to the contrary. And that if you, if you actually ignore it and let it go, then some of it might begin to be perceived as uh, truth. But I don't know what your take is. <laughs> okay, well, I, the, the issue in Nigeria is that, uh, as I said earlier, the tribunals have become part of our electoral process. <laughs> Until all the cases are dispensed of, you cannot uh, certainly say that one has won an election. And uh, the case of the presidential election, let's clarify this. It is not uh, just easy or as simple as saying that uh, for the Labour Party presidential candidate to say that he won the election. Winning the election is not just number of votes. It is number of states. When you win election uh, 25% in uh, 14 or 15 states, in the Nigerian system, it has to be 24 states or more. Uh, so that is uh, an aspect that needs uh, to be clarified. I don't want to go into that. But in our case here in Plateau State, we have instances to prove, especially uh, with regards to the gubernatorial election, uh, that beavers were not used. And that is one of the strong grounds of our petition. Beavers were not used. That is impunity. Which in in certain places or, or at, uh, altogether. And because. Uh, uh, I, no, in, in certain places, as contained in our. Uh, petition. Petition. Particularly in, particularly in Lantang North, in Mangu local government, in uh, just South, and parts of just North that you had mentioned. Yes. Beavers were not when beavers were not used. There were no proper accredi uh, accreditation for the election. That is where one of the major grounds of our this, uh, petition. And as I was telling you uh, before, when you said I should summarize. And the summary of it is that the APC has a strong ground because the, as it stands, and uh, the PT, PDP doesn't want to hear this, that is the Zambara case. Uh, it is staring them in the face and uh, they cannot escape from it because they don't have a valid executive committee members to produce uh, candidates who can contest uh, election. That is one of our major grounds. Even when the courts rule, courts of uh, concurrent jurisdiction, two just high courts ruled that they should go and do the right thing. They refused to do it. They went to court of appeal. The court of appeal uh, dismissed their case that they have no ground. They cannot present candidates because uh, they don't have a valid uh, executive committee. And during, you remember, during the just not uh, Basa Federal House of Reps by election. That issue came up and it was ruled against the PDP that they don't have a validly nominated, uh, validly elected executive committee. So they cannot conduct primaries to uh, produce candidates for election. That is one of our major grounds. They have made all attempts to ensure that uh, our candidate, Dr. Nentawe, uh, did not go to the tribunal. The even evaded uh, service of the petition and uh, forgetting that there are options. And we use the, the option available to us by going to obtain a court order to, uh, uh, to do substituted service. That was two weeks ago. So we are good to go at the tribunal and we are confident that we are going to uh, get justice at the tribunal. 
not just in the gubernatorial election, but other elections where we can uh, second. Okay. Uh, Basil in Abuja, good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning this morning. Okay, then. Hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead. Is it a comment or yes. a question? A comment, please. I heard the. Is this Silvanus, the editor in the studio there? The one you are. Uh, Mr. Silvanus Namang, Mr. Silvanus spokesman Namang. of APC in he Plato. Said a lot, yes, he said a lot about the, the campaigns in Plato State and the uh, Mango local government, especially. He spoke about the uh, religious involvement and however. But if you look at it critically, in Nigerian concept, we know it. And this is what has happened and is happening. You cannot do away with religion in terms of politics. After all, we have two major religious groups in Nigeria. We have other religious, but they are minor. So we don't consider that. We only have two major that display, which is the Islam and the Christianity. And the electorate also, they, are, they, are, they belong to these religions. So you do not expect that elections will not be involved with religious uh, people to participate. After all, Nigeria is a religious nation. So you don't expect to get other voters apart from... Well, actually, people. Nigeria is a secular state. No. Nigeria is a, a secular, secular state. We know. We know. No, he's the one that made mention of religion. How okay. the religion is played in place. That's why I'm just trying oh. to speak all right. on that. Okay. There is nowhere that result is not displayed. Everywhere. So you don't expect a, 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 a Christian-dominated area to, to come there and expect to get votes as others. You can be a herbalist, it's your own. But the truth is that religion is one thing that cannot be denied as far as Nigerian elections is concerned. Although, let me just be that area. Let us go to the election proper. When you are talking of an election that happened at the national level, the electorate conducted themselves properly in a very good and matured manner. But at the end of the day, personally, I was highly disappointed with the so-called Prof. Uh, Mahmoud for the declaration of the election without following the constitutional uh, uh, elite of the elections, as he declared before the elections. He told us that it's going to be uploaded right from the polling unit. All that was not done. The constitutional requirements for a president elect was not met. He went ahead and declared who he said should declare, and he said we should go to court. People have gone to court, and they came out, and they said prisoner of friends, whatever, whatever. So at the end of the day, just as the, uh, the head has said in that place, now you say you are going to tribunal because you are not satisfied with what happened in Plato State. It is the same thing that some of us are not satisfied with the pronouncement made by Mahmoud publicly. Because he told us that before you be declared a president-elect, you must to have 25% of the votes in the FCT. That is after having the, the two tests, which is 24 states. FCT be um. Uh, hello, are you still there, Basil? I mean, because you, uh, wh where that stopped was on a very contentious point, uh, which you know is still being uh, vigorously uh, pursued. Uh, you know it has been said that um, absolutely not. But there are those who are saying, indeed, absolutely. So between absolutely and absolutely not, um, I, I guess we shall be hearing about it uh, shortly. Uh, Mr. Namang, did you want to comment on that? Because I think that caller uh, was going back into a known argument that the word and, and linking the, what, was going, what had gone before that in the Constitution to 25% uh, uh, in the federal capital territory. I don't know if you, if, you care to, if you care to comment, but we have very little time. Yes, you see, our problem is uh, that individuals want to do what will please them. Uh, they are not looking at the proper proper thing or what is uh, supposed to be the case. But what I know as a layman is that uh, it is 24 states of the federation, including uh, Abuja. Abuja could be counted as the 25th. Yes. But certainly you must do more than 24 states. That's right. Which our candidate, the president-elect, got far above that. So he is... You know, Julie, I'm sorry to uh, jump in like this. I, I, think, I thank you very much. I, I'm so sorry. It's so rude of me. I beg your pardon for doing so. But I have to jump in because we've completely run out of time. But you did, you did say that that's not your opinion. 
uh, you've, you've expressed that. And I want to thank you very much, Mr. Sylvanus Namang, for joining us this morning. That's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.